Hello. So, uh, this video is just going to basically be a generic introduction um, to the course. So, I'm not going to include the specific syllabus stuff. I'll do a separate video on that in case it changes um, for other, you know, courses and things to swap videos. So, <clears throat> I just want to sort of introduce, welcome you guys, introduce to Mac 1140. Um, so, this, to be clear, this is the um, pre-calculus, so pre-calc um, algebra. So, in particular, um, without trig. So, just some uh, technical things right off the bat. So, a Mac 1140 uh, is primarily used as the sort of pre-calculus for the non-trig calculus sequence or business calculus. Um, so, the business calculus, that's going to be the MAC uh, 22, sorry, 23, brain hiccup, you'll see these in videos, uh, 2334, um, so this is the business calc. Okay. However, there are some other options. Um, so, for example, so this is the this is the primary sort of follow-up to this class. However, um, and this is also recommended by a lot of um, business advisors. So, feel free to ask your uh, actual advisor, your um, academic advisor. There, they know exactly what to do. But just so you're aware that these things exist, um, there's also MAC one 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 four. This is the trig uh, course, and together with Mac 1140, so these things together allow you to take um, the sort of default uh, science-based um, calculus course, which is MA3 2311. So this is uh, calculus one. So. If you take this course, MAC 1140 and MAC 1114, which is a trig course, um, it's not a full course load course. Uh, I, don't, I don't remember offhand exactly how many credits. I think it's a two credit course, um, but that sort of changes depending on the semester or the year. Um, so regardless, again, academic advisor can tell you uh, about how to go or you can talk to the math undergraduate advisor. Um, either way, if you take these two together, you can take the, the regular calculus course, the sort of calculus for um, the physics, uh, sorry, for the physical sciences, or you can take Mac 1140 and take the business calculus class. Um, if you are looking at something like this, again, just so you're aware, another option, um, instead of these, instead of taking Mac 1140 and Mac 1114 together, you can take uh, MAC 1147, and this is pre-calc with trig, okay? So 1140 is um, just the algebra parts of it, so essentially it is um, this course without trig, and so you can supplement with trig sort of on in parallel or off to the side and then take a, uh, 2311, but if you know you want to take 2311, you can also take 1147 instead of taking both of these, um, and that would be the same sort of requirements met. That being said, there's usually a good reason why your academic advisor or the undergrad math advisor um, would suggest 1140. So if somebody already suggested 1140, that's probably for a good reason. But you can always talk to them and ask them uh, if 1147 would work for you or if there's a good reason to take 1140. So just so you're aware that these things exist, okay? In terms of pre -calc uh, sorry, prerequisites for pre-calculus for 1140, there aren't technically um, any official prerequisites. Where, how you do on your uh, intro exam, so uh, typically, at least at the time that I'm recording this, we use Alex, but if we use a different one in the future, um, how you do in that might depend, uh, might depict whether you go to 1140 versus, say, 1147 or um, 1105, uh, which is college algebra. So officially, there's no real prereq um, 
but that sort of unofficially, you know, depending on how you did on your um, entry exam, you may want to take this, or you may want to take 1105 if you're a little more rusty on the algebra, um, or you could even take 1147 if you're intending on going for this 2311, okay? All right, so that's all the sort of technical stuff. Uh, I want to make sure I didn't miss anything here, so I'm just checking real quick. Um, yeah, okay, so this is all the, the sort of technical course numbers and all of that stuff. Okay, so for this class in particular, so I want to take a, an opportunity here, take the opportunity to go through how this class is sort of a little different maybe than what you're used to. So right off the bat, I'm gonna be very sort of explicit that this course um, is going to be taught sort of taught differently than um, you're, what you're probably used to than you are used to. Now there's a, a number of reasons for that and I want to be explicit as to why this is happening um, for a number of reasons. One, I think transparency is pretty important with the students. Um, but two, I want to make it clear that because it's being taught differently, and this isn't a mistake, um, this isn't me going crazy or anything, uh, it also sort of, I'm trying to emphasize different things for you guys so that you can succeed in your future classes, and knowing that and knowing what to sort of study and what to look at and what is sort of important going in, should, I'm hoping, will help you with that. So, for your previous courses, so previously, Um, they tend to sort of emphasize this idea of, uh, what's the word I want? Emphasize the idea of a particular sort of mechanical skill. So you, you emphasize mechanics. Now don't get me wrong, in this course we are absolutely going to be covering a lot of mechanics, how to solve polynomials, how to factor, how to do synthetic division, um, you know, how to graph exponentials, all these things. We're definitely covering these mechanics. But here, in this course now, so now, the thing that we want to emphasize Instead of emphasizing just the mechanics, we want to emphasize the sort of context that these mechanics are done in. We want to emphasize the interconnections between these different mechanics so that we have sort of the skill set necessary, uh, both at a higher math level, so when you go into calculus, as well as in the real world. When somebody asks you a question, they won't necessarily ask, and in fact, in the real world, we'll almost never ask, like, here's an equation, solve for x, right? That's not, that's not going to happen in the real world. But what they will do is they'll ask you a question where it is sort of not obviously equivalent to that kind of question. And so what we were trying to emphasize here is this context uh, for problem solving. Okay. So there are um, there are some pieces to this. So explicitly, sort of very actively, one of the things we're going to be doing, and I'm going to, again, write this down here over here. So we're going to be doing something called contextual-based learning. And I'm going to go into this more later uh, in another video. But the basic idea of contextual-based learning is that instead of learning these um, things in isolation, instead of learning, you know, if you have a quadratic, here's how you factor a quadratic. And it's sort of very cut and dry, um, which again, we are going through some of that. We will do mechanics. Rather than just sort of have that as, you know, piece and piece and piece, instead we're going to try to put these things in context. We're going to try to put these things into a bigger picture and in fact start with a bigger picture so that you can see how um, these things are sort of interrelated and how you can apply them in the real world and to actual problem solving, okay? Um, also, 
sort of along the lines with this, we're going to try to emphasize um, learning over memorizing. So again, in previous math courses, um, a very common sort of approach to mathematics in general is this idea that if you do enough, you will learn the idea, right? So if you do enough practice problems, you learn the mechanic. And there's some truth to that. Um, this is something that's studied in you know, actual education theory. In my experience, however, um, doing that without sort of being clear that that's what's happening tends to learn, tends to lean more toward memorizing than learning. And there, there is a distinct difference. So for example, if I asked you like, what is a bagel? If you had to describe to me what a bagel was, what would you have, how would you describe that? How would you define that, right? Chances are good all of you could probably define what a bagel is, right? In, in terms of something that I would understand. Nonetheless, whatever definition you come up with, whatever sort of description you come up with, if you open your like Oxford English Dictionary and go and find the definition of bagel and read it out, it's probably not gonna be the same, right? But that's because you don't, you didn't memorize the definition of a bagel. You don't think like, okay, I have to think of what a bagel is. You think of opening the dictionary and coming out word for word. That's not, that's not how you do that, right? You know what a bagel is, so you describe it. That's the difference between learning. You've learned what a bagel is, you didn't memorize what it was, right? But all too often in mathematics, we sort of have this memorizing idea for learning where I'd be like, okay, what's the quadratic formula? And you just spit it out because you've memorized it. And you equate that to learning what the quadratic formula is. But those are very different skills, right? It's, it would be easy enough to sort of memorize the definition of a bagel, but if you've never sort of encountered one, you don't really know what one would be. You just have this sort of definition floating around in your head in some abstract sense. So in this course, we're, we're hoping to do learning over memorizing. And as we go, we'll try to discuss how to sort of on how to know if you've learned it versus if you're just memorizing it and what it means to do that, okay? Um, sort of last but not least for this particular setting, um, so as we continue, again, this is uh, recorded during the pandemic and <laughs> basically apocalypse, but you know, whatever. <laughs> um, so this is for an online setting. Uh, just so you're aware, uh, this course, the reason why we're doing videos like this, is we're aiming for an asynchronous uh, course. So what asynchronous means is that there aren't going to be sort of um, regular Zoom meetings or regular online meetings where everybody has to show up and then I or somebody lectures to you about the content. Instead, I will have all these videos that I make in advance, um, and you can go through them at sort of your own pace with the knowledge that there are benchmarks you have to meet along the way. There are exams at certain time intervals on certain topics. You have to finish all of the stuff before the exam. But when you actually do it is sort of up to you, okay? Keep in mind, though, that waiting till the last you know, few days to do the last three weeks worth of work is going to end poorly. And not just in terms of grades, but with the way this course is structured, it's gonna hurt you long-term throughout the rest of the course. Um, and I will, I'm doing a separate video on how this course is sort of structured and how it's being developed uh, sort of in real time in this uh, semester. So I'll get into that more in the other video, okay? So that is the sort of general introduction, just so you are aware. Um, so again, the. The technical stuff, uh, this is 1140, so this is the part without trig. If you want, you can take the trig class separately to go into the sort of calculus uh, for physical scientists. Otherwise, you can take the business calc one, um, which is a different number. And again, if you're planning on going into 2311, the sort of um, physical sciences calculus type, the sort of classic calculus, um, 1147 can be done instead of 1140 and 1114 with that little asterisk that, you know, you might be placed in the class for particular reasons. You should absolutely talk to your academic advisor or the undergraduate um, coordinator and advisor in the math department. In terms of this course in particular, it's going to be very different. We'll discuss that as we go. Um, so in particular, although we're going to be doing mechanics, we're trying to emphasize uh, problem solving and contextualizing this stuff using contextual-based learning and trying to emphasize learning over memorizing. 
photography. And a lot of the content will be delivered in these kinds of videos rather than over online meetings or mass uh, meetings, although obviously there will be opportunities for online meetings with office hours and that kind of thing. Okay, so that is that.